Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's day 16 of the 30 days of 30 minute rows and today we're going to be down at that bottom tier, bottom intensity, recovery kind of regenerative row, okay? This is to get you set up for tomorrow's session which is going to be a top tier but also to kind of let you recover after yesterday's mid tier option with that kind of pushing the pace at the 20 strokes a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to split our 30 minute row into five minutes chunks and we're going to row them at 18 20 22 strokes a minute twice so 18 20 22 18 20 22 now you're going to start those 18 strokes a minute at 2k plus 20 to 22 seconds now where you start on that is down to how your energy feels today so if you're feeling a little bit tired worn out after yesterday's push session then sit on the back end of the pace guide okay then as you go up to the 20 strokes a minute, you just go two seconds faster. And when you get to the 22 strokes per minute section, you go two seconds faster than that, okay? And then you just repeat the whole thing again, go back to that original 18 strokes a minute pace and rise up. And that should give you a good old workout today. Those 22 strokes a minute are a little bit, uh, you're going to be going a little bit faster, maybe run about 2K plus 16, 2K plus 18. Um, so it's going to be a nice kind of workout through these different stroke rates, okay? Um, so we might as well get into the four minute uh, warm up and I'll just flannel and other stuff at you during the main row i just i was thinking about saying something else then i thought no just talk to them during the row so four minute warm-up as always we start off by setting up our machine on the concept two that means going straight to the drag factor which i'm wildly gesticulating at um, the lever on the front of the machine now make sure if you're on a different machine to go menu more options display drag factor row a couple of strokes and see what the drag factor on that machine's for. Don't just set the lever, okay? As a guide, I normally set the mine for around about 120, 125, whereas because I'm still nursing this into costal and I don't want it to get um, worse while it's healing, I'm just down that little bit, around about 115 today. Next up, if you can, go to your monitor and set it to eye heights. So you're not having to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, if you're able to set the uh, foot stretcher height, then set it to a point where you can get to the front of the machine comfortably with your shins pointing vertically okay if you are set too high then you might not be able to get to that vertical point if you're set too low you might go floating or flying straight past um, and you can hyperextend things as a guide, put the strap across the balls of your feet or around about the bottom lace of your shoe and adjust from there. But everybody's biomechanics is different, so there isn't really a, this is how to do it, okay? So our four minute warm up. we're gonna do this at 18 strokes per minute and really pace wise to start, just give a solid push from your legs, but not too powerful because you wanna think about connecting the power from your feet to your hands first, and then you can start to increase your pace, okay? I will explain as we start in three, two, one, let's go. So, I know you've probably heard me say this over and over again, but it's worth repeating that the power in your stroke comes from your feet first. So you push your feet into the machine. Push. But you have to get that power from your feet to your hands. And then from your hands to the handle and to the flywheel. And you do that by, well, pushing your feet and connecting the handle to the flywheel or the water wheel, whatever, at the same time. So there's an element of timing here to make sure that you get it right, but also body position with that forward lean and straight arms. You really should feel a snap of your arms into the machine as you push with your feet. Try not to grab early with your arms. But I'll talk more about this technique stuff in the main row today. Once you think you've got a hang of this timing, start to increase your pace, maybe closer to 2K plus 20 for the next 35 seconds or so. And if you don't know what I mean by 2k pace, then row a two kilometer time trial and divide the resulting time by four. And that gives you your average time to cover 500 meters in your 2k time trial. And that's your 2k training pace. So when I say row at 2k plus 20, you just go 20 seconds slower than your 2k training pace. Right, one more stroke, and let's put one foot on the floor, continue rowing. 
really not much should change here. You'll probably drop about four or five seconds pace. But your technique should still stay the same. You should still give a good old push from your leg out the front. That forward lean straight arms. And it helps with balance. Swap feet. It helps you to focus on that push from your legs. And as you swap feet, do take a look and see if there's a huge discrepancy between this one and the other one. Two seconds, or even like four seconds maybe would be okay, but if you're really slower or faster with the other leg, you may have a bit of an imbalance going on. Right, both feet in, legs straight, and then just row over your back and arms. So swing your back over your hips and then pull in your arms. Push out your arms, swing back over your hips. And really do think about hinging, rocking backwards and forwards over your hips, picking up the flywheel with your back first and then pulling in your arms. Okay, opposite. Let's get to the front of the machine with straight arms and a forward lean and just press out from the front. Try to still have a good posture here. It's quite easy to kind of get further and further down as you try and hold this position and then get that timing right of your feet connecting to your hands as you press out from the front of the machine. One more. Oh, nicely done. Well done. Warm up done. So, it's not that intense a workout today, so uh, you probably don't have to keep on warming up if you don't want to. So, uh, have a quick drink. Maybe just kind of rock up and down the rail while I go over what we're doing today. But by all means, if you want to continue doing some light rowing to just stay nice and warm, then you can. But just make sure and load up 30 minutes into your monitor. Set the splits to five minutes. If you're using ErgZone, then it's sitting there as... I think it's 3030 slash 16, because today's day 16. You can use that. I'm going to have a quick drink. So, we're doing today's row as five minute intervals for our half hour, which gives six of them, strangely. <laughs> um, and we're going to do it at 18, 20, 22 strokes per minute. The 18s, we're going to do it 2K plus 20 to 22, and then we're going to go two seconds faster for the 20s, and then two seconds faster still for the 22s. And we're going to go back down to that starting pace again for the 18s, and then we're going to go 20, 22 again, the same way as before. So it's a really simple row, but breaking it into the five minute chunks, and this little increase of pace and stroke rate should at least make it um, just kind of chunder along quite nicely. You're not going to be looking at half hour the whole time, you're just going to be looking at these little five minute sections that you have to get through. So. And as such, you're using this as the, on the bottom end of the pace in order to work on your fitness and to take a little bit of time to think about your technique. So I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to um, top load. I'm not even loaded it in myself after me saying make sure and <laughs> load it in. Um, I'm going to start talking technique from the top of today's session. Um, can do a refresher course on technique. Oh, sorry, I had to put a tiny little edit in there. I um, had a bit of a coughing fit. <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, yeah, so I'll talk about my usual nonsense once we get through the technique side of things. Um, but yeah, oh, it's a good thing I'm not doing this actually live, isn't it? You would have sat here for 30 seconds listening to me um, coughing up my lungs. <laughs> Anyway, right, are you ready for this then? So we're starting at 18 strokes a minute, round about 2K plus 20 to 22 pace. Um, and yeah, and then we'll change up after five minutes. So here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. Oh, right, now I'm gonna, I, said, I know I said I'm gonna talk technique, but I'm gonna quickly explain my pace first. I'm just gonna see where I naturally fall in for 18 strokes a minute right now. I'm gonna kind of think, yeah, plus 22. I'm gonna take it nice and gentle today because I'm still a little bit wary about the damage that I did to my intercostals, but also because I've got a Zwift bike race later tonight and I don't wanna exhaust myself either for it or ahead of 
tomorrow's top tier row or top intensity row so right let's do a back to basics shakedown through techniques there's been I think it's been at least a week since I've talked about it right from the top of the row and kind of broken it down into all of the little tips that I'd probably give you so it's probably worthwhile doing let's just hope I don't miss any of the <laughs> or the next five minute change up as a result of talking so much so right here we go like I said in the warm up the important big thing to remember about the rowing stroke is that the power comes from your legs so don't think of this as a pulling motion obviously yes the handle pulls on the chain which makes the flywheel go but you start that with the power coming from your legs through your body into your arms and your arms are straight as the force goes from your legs through your body and into your hands and if you think about rowing being more of a pulling motion then what tends to happen is that you may have a tendency to pull and grab too early on the handle which will basically just reduce your efficiency and power and really if you're rowing you want to be going at a good pace that you're capable of and not lose that power just due to inefficient technique so best thing to think about is pushing the machine away from you with your feet you just think about push it into the wall in front of you but you still need to get the power into your hands it's not very good saying push with your feet but if you don't connect your hands to the flywheel then you're not going to go anywhere well you'll go backwards but that's it <laughs> so the most efficient way to get that power into the machine to then be able to use your arms later to add in power is as you come forwards lean slightly in towards the front of the machine to run about one o'clock on the clock face and have your arms out in front of you nice and straight but relaxed loose loose shoulders you should be able to kind of flop around a little bit as you're coming forwards i talk about zombies <sighs> because they're nice and loose and relaxed you never see a tent zombie okay three strokes and then we'll go up to 20 strokes a minute after this one you ready here we go so tw 20 strokes per minute and just increase your pace by two seconds now hopefully what's going to have happened is that in order to increase your pace you are pushing a little bit harder with your legs and that gives you a faster drive phase of the stroke which means that you're putting more power into the machine from a greater push of the feet 
but also you're taking two extra strokes per minute compared to what you were before and if you figure you might cover around about 10 meters per stroke then that's an extra 20 meters every minute so anyway, your pace will have gone up hopefully naturally just by increasing your stroke rate is what I'm saying anyway where was I so forward lean arms straight but relaxed you don't want to come forwards like a rigid piece of iron as you're coming forwards you want to be nice and loose because what you're looking to do is as you drive you let the power flow through your body rather than trying to resist it by being tense I don't know if you've ever done the thing where you stand with your fists by your side and straight arms and then somebody comes along and tries to lift you up by pushing up on your fists if you have straight arms it's really easy to lift someone up if you have nice relaxed arms it's almost impossible to lift someone up because that power is just being sent through your body rather than straight into your biceps now I know what you're thinking hang on that's a weird analogy surely that would mean straight tense arms would be better and trust me the thought occurred to me too while I was saying that analogy but <laughs> the difference is what I said about when your arms are loose that power is going right up through your body up through your shoulders down your back and then planting back into the ground again and that's why they can't lift you so that was a long winded way of saying keep your arms loose as you come forwards and then as you push your feet into the machine you brace against the handle obviously because otherwise you just let go of the handle you go <laughs> so you have to brace against it but as you start the drive you still don't really go for a pulling sensation it's just it's like if you're hanging from a bar from above you you don't pull against that bar you just hang off it and that's exactly what's happening here you're just hanging off the handle okay three two one right up to 22 strokes a minute and another two seconds faster same as before just a little increase in that push from your legs should be enough to give you a faster drive speed and those extra two strokes per minute then combine together to increase your pace as well as your stroke rate and what 
you should have felt if you're doing this hang off the handle thing is that it's like you're a little bit heavier because you're pushing harder with your legs you're putting more force into the handle when you hang and really I'm quite uh, pleased, let's <laughs> say, self-congratulatory pleased with that idea of like hanging from a pull-up bar if you were just to hold on to one so that your feet are off the ground but you're just dangling there basically you wouldn't say you were pulling on the bar would you it's just that weight of your body against the bar that's keeping you up in the air like holding on to it and that's exactly the same with the push of your feet connecting to the handle here you're just hanging off it that was a really deep discussion about just the handle wasn't it here's me thinking I'd race through technique today but if you have a forward lean arm straight nice and relaxed and then you make sure you have a good posture and that means being up on your sit bones as you come forwards okay so your shoulders should be past your hips and that forward lean should be because you have tilted over your hips rather than it being about kind of crunching forwards in a golem-esque little ball okay I'm going to be up and powerful for those on the podcast apologies if the stroke rate went off but I was demonstrating a golem-esque ball but nice powerful hinged tilted over your hips core is braced as you drive chin should be neutral which is why I say about the monitor at eye height so keep that chin down and neutral and hopefully that will prevent you from looking up in the air as you drive seat slide like I said before the warm-up you want to slide far enough so that your legs or your shin sorry are pointing vertically try not to go past it by too much as that causes power leaks but if you can't quite get there then either your flexibility needs improved or your foot stretchers are too high now hang on two strokes one more back down to 18s Woo. there you go so that was a quick first half of today's row wasn't it we're well past or we're 15 seconds past the Bon Jovi point of this row and that's what we're doing so just an increase in pace and rate and this next 18 strokes a minute chunk should settle your heart rate down and things so that the workout doesn't feel too intense 
but it shouldn't really even at 22s it might rise to about six out of ten on the effort scale but shouldn't really go above that but do try and stay back at the original pace that you rode at 18 strokes a minute don't back right off the pace try and lock back into it so quick tip about flexibility if you are not able to come forwards with your shins at vertical because it could be a flexibility thing not everyone can get into this position so what to do is in between rows okay don't do it while you're rowing but try to spot how far you can slide and also where you need the seat to be for your shins to be vertical and then get two post-it notes put one where you want to be where the seat would roll to in a vertical position put that post-it right in front of the roller under your seat and then the other one put a little bit between where you can manage to get to and where you want to get to and then start rowing and what will happen is that if you try to gradually increase how much the seat slides when you hit that new point you'll feel a little click as the roller from your seat goes over that first post-it note and so you do that for a session and then the next time you're on just move it a tiny bit closer and then keep on doing that so that every time you manage a row where you hit that first note in the next one move it further forwards until you get to the point where you need to be and that way you'll gradually increase your flexibility over a period of four or five rows rather than finding that point and putting like a towel or a bungee cord around it and just slamming into it at full speed and brute forcing some kind of flexibility which doesn't teach you anything and could injure you whereas that little feedback note from the post-it that little click so all you need and I can say over the course of a few sessions your flexibility will increase other thing to say is don't worry if your heels come off the foot plate a tiny bit you'll hear people talking about how you shouldn't lift your heels you can just not so that they're parallel to the floor two strokes one more up to 20 strokes a minute right and then the last thing to say about body position remember you're going two seconds faster here is your knees you the two things well well just one actually you don't want to have your knees together as you come forwards okay if you're knock kneed it's really hard to get that power in it's really awkward actually never rode like that before me no likey <coughs> so you want your knees kind of 
shoulder width apart maybe not quite that wide basically if your knees were closer they'd be tucked inside your armpits that's the perfect width but because of your posture and foot stretcher height your knees should still be underneath your armpits and then when you're ready just push those feet into the machine hold your arms straight and that forward lean and the power from your legs will flood into the machine and then once your legs are about halfway through you'll find the power will start to fade and that is when you finally swing your back from that forward lean to a backward lean and then as you start that swing you then start to finally pull the handle into a finish so your straight pull straight pull your arms really are meant to be straight for that long straight pull and then as you pull the best position as far as I see it is the handle at sternum height and elbows through your sides you may need your elbows to go slightly flared out because you want to keep your wrists nice and flat rather than bunny hands where you end up like this if you can go wrists flat sternum height elbows through so that you squeeze your shoulder blades together then that's how you employ your back muscles which are much stronger than your delts biceps and forearms which you use if you do that weird high finish which just runs the risk of rotator cuff issues in your shoulders tennis elbow in your forearms and possible torn biceps if you don't have the powerful body strong enough to deal with those really high forces whereas sternum height with a handle elbows through wrist flat and your back muscles should be good your back is big and strong enough to deal with that power just make sure and keep your shoulders down don't shrug them up to your ears if you get like neck pain that's often why okay two one here we go 22 strokes a minute this is our last interval so you pull the handle in and that creates like a spring of your arms coming through your sides and your body wants to bounce your arms away again only a few inches but it's enough to create a momentum that all you have to do is continue your arms moving forwards 
you're not really using any muscles at all apart from maybe stability muscles in your arms and then as your arms come forwards that triggers your forward lean that rock over your hips so that by the time the handle is past your knees you have straight arms and that forward tilt and are in the perfect body position for the start of the next stroke and all you have to do is bend your knees to recover to the front of the machine ready for the next stroke and so because that forward momentum of your hands and back is already moving you towards the front of the machine you don't need to tug your feet against the foot straps you'll see loads of people pulling themselves forwards and the big problem with that is that it collapses your posture so suddenly everything's wrong I'm leaning backwards as I'm rolling forwards and my knees pop up so suddenly I have to do this really weird kind of alley-oop to get into the right position and just doing that what, four times? absolutely exhausted me because I'm using muscles I don't need to use not only the muscles to tug me back up the rail but trying to get out of that terrible lean back posture into this forward lean and straight arms now the last thing to say as we come into a close is handle height through the whole stroke should be pretty much on an even plane so neutral in front of you at the start of the stroke pull into sternum height and then back out in the same rhythm and at the same height so in out let that bounce that rebound take care of in out it just comes back out at the same height so you're not scraping the handle down okay if you sense you are doing this try to stop it even on a boat there's no need you might want to have a small tap down on the boat but you're certainly not scraping it all the way down so that the chain flaps off the bottom of the machine okay so it's nice and neutral straight line and that pretty much covers most of the stroke I didn't even get a chance to talk about other rubbish because <clears throat> we're done there you go now that was definitely a gentle roll for me I was let's see plus 22 almost 23 for the first one then plus 21 plus 18 so yeah so I was basically it's even further back off my I was like second extra off my pace guide but mostly because I want to protect my side and like I say there's this Zwift bike race that I've got coming up in 
So then we've got about five hours time, so I don't want to be too exhausted before that. And it's not like I'm cheaping out on you folks, <laughs> I hope. Um, this is a bottom intensity fitness building workout where actually the slow, not the, the slower, but if you're going to choose either side of a pace guide for this row, pick the slower side up to around about four seconds, four or five seconds. You're still going to get all the benefits out of this row, even if you're five seconds slower than the pace guides that I'm giving you. Um, it's the other way. It's going faster that causes problems um, because you start to get out of that bottom tier foundation building area and more into the mid intensity, which is more about fitness um, at intensity or um, more mental fitness, to be honest, is being able to push through that pace. It's kind of what we did yesterday. Anyway, let's get into a two minute cool down then. We'll do this at 18 strokes a minute. It was a nice gentle row today. So really just pick whatever you feel like doing from a pace point of view. I'll be around about 2K plus 30 for this, just to let myself just slide into neutral. So here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. But the key, no matter what pace you're going to row this at, is to really try and consolidate what you may just have been thinking about when it came to technique. So that swing of your back over your hips from a one o'clock to 11 o'clock and making sure to hold that one o'clock, hold, swing. So you really are push, swing and then adding the pull in at the end. Push, swing, pull. Push, swing, pull. It really is like that. And then it's the reverse for the return, where it's arms, rock, knees. Arms, rock, knees. And that gives you the fluid motion of your body, especially if you make sure all three of those elements either side of the stroke so push rock pull all happens push rock pull one after the other smoothly they blend into each other and it's the same with a return where it's arms back knees arms back legs i'm not jerking through either side i'm not going arms back legs in a real robotic, jagged motion. So I've said before, it's like Tai Chi. It's about blending fluid motion, using your body's momentum to get you backwards and forwards through the stroke. And also making sure you've got good posture and your core is braced at both ends of the stroke. But fluid timing and momentum is really what it's all about. So you don't have to stop just because I have. You can carry on cooling down or you can do some stretching. I recommend stretching your hamstrings, your quads, um, shoulders, arms, biceps and stuff. Maybe some supine twists to help with your lower back in case you have any kind of niggles down there. Um, yeah, and then hopefully by the time you're done stretching, I'll be done talking. The one thing I wanted to say today and I might talk about this properly in a, another row. It's just because I'm doing this Swift bike race thing tonight. It's just about cross training, whether it helps to do other things. It's like, I, so I basically do from a cardio point of view, I'll go for a run, I'll row, obviously. I'll do my bike stuff and I'll do ski erg. And in, yes, there's going to be value for each of these are going to feed into each of the other ones, especially in terms of base fitness. So the fitness that I have on a rowing machine easily translates into a bike, but the muscles I use on the bike are different than on a rowing machine. So I have to do a little bit of training on the bike to kind of make sure that I'm okay for when I'm doing the, the races and things. But really how they complement each other is about, um, it's like the bike, I can really push myself uh, on sprints and things harder than I would on a rowing machine because it's easier on a bike because it's only your legs. And so that kind of almost taking myself further than I'd allow myself to on a rowing machine is really useful because then when I get on the rowing machine, I can then push myself a little bit harder. So say I can only, I mean, let's throw numbers at this. Okay, so say my absolute max like body intensity on a rowing machine sprint could be like 90%. Whereas on a bike, 
um, I can actually take my body up to like 98%. So if I train enough on the bike going up to that 98, then what I might find is that my rowing machine max jumps up to like 94% of what I'm able to achieve because I've suffered, if you get what I mean, and I'm then able to kind of go, oh, it's all right, I understand, I understand this sufferance. I can take myself a little bit further on the rowing machine. And I have found that since I stopped um, actually commuting by, by bike, that my rowing suffered because what I used to do is I'd sprint from light to light to try and get away from the cars that were behind me. And that kind of fartlet training, that sprint training really, really helps when it comes to rowing. And as being I don't do that anymore, um, it's kind of harmed. And I think this is maybe part of the reason why I now kind of, I don't enjoy these full on max sessions anymore because I haven't, I don't go through it on the bike. So I don't have that translation anymore. It's only about the rowing machine. So that's why uh, the cross training, mixing things up helps is you can pull things from something to somewhere else. There's like rhythm that comes with using the ski erg. And again, sufferance, trust me on a ski erg is, oh, um, goes into a rowing machine. There's something about that low level pounding of going out for a row that then allows you to fall into these low rate 30 minute workouts on the rowing machine because it's just about plodding your way through and hitting that kind of meditative state that if you're only ever about ah full speed that they can be a bit weird whereas you can't go full speed for an hour run because you'll make it to the end of the road and go oh, oh i need to stop so it all feeds into itself it's all about mental training and physical training and fitness and muscles and stuff so so don't shy away from doing something else if your focus is rowing you want to make sure like 80 percent of what you do is rowing okay and everything else just is there to help it um but yeah you use other things to help it. There's nothing wrong with, with if you're already doing like six rowing sessions a week, dropping one and sticking in a bike session as well if you want to do something a little bit different and to keep you to keep things fresh. It's really easy to, to people talk about losing their rojo, um, uh, which yeah, it does happen where you just kind of get, you're so fed up of just looking at this monitor and maybe you're not quite getting the, the increases that you want. So therefore, um, just jumping and doing something else for a while, just is, it's like, hit and control out delete on your computer you just suddenly come back to the row erg and you're like yeah here we go i can i can hit this one hard because i did a nice session on the bike yesterday so yeah anyway that's what i was going to say and actually there's probably no need for me to say that in a in another video because that's pretty much what i was going to say um when i was thinking about the zwift race that i've got later on tonight uh so let's just hope that uh i don't end up a gibbering <laughs> wreck by the end of it and not able to hit the top tier row tomorrow but hey Let's see how that one goes. Um, it's all about you anyway. It's all about how you get on with it. I do the session along with you. Um, and so it doesn't matter. I'm still going to put in just as as much effort as I can. It's just that my actual ceiling of effort might only be done at like 90% instead of 100%. I, I don't really know what these numbers mean. But anyway, anyway, all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Okay, so today was a nice bottom tier, fitness building one. My heart rate kind of never really got above 140, so it'll be a nice kind of low level. It'll get me all nicely zinged up for, for later, and hopefully it'll do the same for you for tomorrow's session if you're rowing along with me and doing a top tier next. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that's kind of the end of my little stories. Um, let's, I don't know, there isn't really, is there anything I can put in from that kind of uh, mixing training thing as the, the hashtag for today? So this is my thinking pose. This is how I think. Um, there isn't really, is there? So what else did we talk about? Technique, we talked about, oh, I don't know. I mean, let's, have we done, well, Zwift seems a little bit random, doesn't it, to have that as a hashtag? Anyone's going to go, what, Zwift, hey? Ah, why not? It's, it's the end of the Zwift Racing League, so, um, and it is, yeah, why not? Just hashtag Zwift, that's with a Z at the top. Um, just because I can't think of anything better to say. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed today's row. I will see you in either the next one that I'm doing or in a completely different video with either a different haircut, a different beard. Maybe I'll, ha maybe I'll be thinner, maybe I'll be fatter. Depends what year you watch. Um, yeah, and, uh, and I will see you in one of them. And hopefully uh, you will join me for another one. Make sure you leave some kind of comment and say hello. Uh, and let me know how you got on with today's. Oh, I suddenly went very Scottish then. I went hello <laughs> instead of hello. I say hello to me. Aye, it'll be very nice. Um, yeah, sorry. That's me. I've now alienated my own country as well as the, the American impressions and the English ones I've done before. I'm just, I'm going to have nowhere to live. I'll be, it'll be me and Richard Branson on his really rich islands just going, where is everybody? <laughs> anyway, at least I'll have it. As long as I've got an internet connection, I can carry on making these videos for you. So. Right, I'm done. Do look after yourselves. Stay safe. Be well. Bye-bye.